Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Alumni Weekend. I'm Ellis Arnold, class of 1979 and Senior Executive Vice President. Pleased to welcome you today. And I'd like to call on Reverend J.J. Whitney, Hendricks class of 96, our chaplain for this morning's invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are honored to be counted among your people. And we are grateful to be called by you and glad for our particular traditions of faith in the world. You have marked us and named us, and we celebrate that we are a people who represent diverse communities and passions and gifts. You engage us in our difference and give us courage for varied vocations and energy to do that work. We celebrate today those persons who have chosen to follow a special calling, and we lift up these exemplars. Carol Hampton Rasco. Heather Newell, and Douglas Hutchings. They have been given gifts of mentoring, public service, business, a care for the earth, education, and communication. And they have used those gifts to make a difference in the lives of the communities around them. We are grateful that they represent who we are as Hendricks College. Encouraged by their service to others, fill us so with your love and grace that we may face each day with a desire to reach out to our neighbors. Send your blessing on this gathering and that we might honor and celebrate our Hendricks community. We give thanks for those who have prepared and now serve our meal. May we truly recognize your presence as we break bread with each other. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, JJ. Please continue to enjoy your uh, brunch this morning. Uh, in this very room yesterday, we had the pleasure of inducting the class of 1969 into the Half Century Club. We had a record crowd that was standing room only in this room yesterday as we welcomed back the class of 69 and, and all the prior inductees to the Half Century Club. Um, and today, we are thrilled to have you on campus for an event that the Alumni Board of Governors uh, looks forward to, the Alumni Office, our campus community, as well as all the fellow alums of our greater Hendricks community to celebrate the accomplishments uh, of your classmates. Um, before we begin, I would like to express appreciation to Chef uh, Scott Pickens, to Mike Flory, to Mindy Nichols, and the entire dining, dining services staff for our brunch. Thank you. Mm. 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 And I know that we have some retired faculty and staff here, if, or, as well as current. If, if you would, could you please stand so we could recognize you as well? Thank you. Mm. And I believe we also have some past alumni award recipients. If you could, could you please stand so we could recognize you as well, too? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're grateful for all the service that our Alumni Board of Governors and our Board of Trustees give to the college each year. Uh, they serve in so many ways, and this is sort of the uh, pinnacle event for the Alumni Board. If any current or former Alumni Board of Governors members or Board of Trustees, if you could stand, please. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Well, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce President Bill Sutsu, the 11th president of the college. Bill. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome. It is a pleasure for us to have you with us here today as we honor three individuals for their achievements and their service to the Hendricks community and to the world. It is always fun to recognize exceptional individuals who have done so much, given so much of themselves, and meant so much to so many. This is only the fifth such ceremony for me, but it really stands out to me as one of those annual events on this campus, which is genuinely special and genuinely joyful, and I'm glad so many of you could be a part of it this year. Thank you all for being here. Now, there will be many words of praise for our honorees in due course, but my assignment today is to just give you a brief update on the college as one of the main goals of Alumni Weekend is to make sure no one leaves this campus without heaping servings of both nostalgia and propaganda. <laughs> As president, of course, my job is to be salesman in chief for Hendricks. Happily, that has been a very easy job for me ever since I arrived here. 
since there is so much good going on on this campus and so much we can and should collectively celebrate. I know everyone in this room gets all the Hendrix mailings and reads all our social media posts and you can probably already recite all of our brag points about great rankings, successful students, and big headlines on campus. But some of you, I suspect, don't get back, don't get back to Conway all that often. So I just wanted to take a few minutes today to talk with you about what hasn't changed very much since your days at Hendrix, and also what has changed and is changing. Uh, not just in recent years uh, or in recent weeks, uh, but today uh, over on the work site. First of all, let me assure you, Hendrix still has great faculty. Uh, in recent years, we have seen the retirements of some of the real institutions uh, on this campus. Today, we'll hear uh, four last lectures uh, from people like Joyce Harden and Danny Grace, who really uh, have been such important parts of our community. But it hasn't been that long uh, since uh, folks like Alice Hines uh, and Tom Goodwin uh, retired. Uh, not that you can tell that Tom has actually retired. Uh, he's around campus more than most of the faculty who are still on payroll. Uh, I bump into him everywhere. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, uh, Tom traveled uh, with David Knight, Pete Guess, uh, and a faculty member, Jen Penner, uh, uh, and me to uh, Rwanda uh, to uh, visit alums there uh, and establish connections uh, with a girls' school uh, uh, over there. And that was a, a lot of fun, and we were thrilled to have Tom, who's done so much with our Rwandan students over time. I could brag uh, on a lot uh, of our current faculty members, but let me just mention a couple. Uh, our biology professor, Matt Moran, uh, uh, conducts research on grasslands ecology, uh, almost all of it uh, with uh, his students here at Hendricks. And he has received national attention over the past few months for pieces he has written on the American bison, uh, which have been picked up by media outlets, including Newsweek magazine. I also want to give some praise to our professor of English and film studies, Josh Glick, whose book, Los Angeles Documentary and the Production of Public History, was published at the end of last year by the University of California Press and has received very strong reviews in many outlets, including Film Quarterly and the Los Angeles Review of Books. In addition to these wonderful faculty, Hendricks also continues to have marvelous students. Among the very brightest in the nation and some of the most engaged, curious, and good young people I have ever met. One of them is working here today. Mary Nail, would you hold up your hand, please? She is our videographer today. She has also, I believe, won more prizes at the Red Brick Film Festival than any other person or than any other person should. Uh, she probably has a wall full of hardware just for that. But she has been an incredible uh, 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 member of our campus. Uh, she's won awards for her uh, filmmaking, uh, not just here, but also at places like the Hot Springs Documentary uh, Film Festival. Uh, and uh, she's going off this summer uh, to intern with a company in Connecticut that works for big operations like ESPN. Uh, and I just hope she stays around long enough to get her degree uh, before she uh, heads off into that world. Uh, we had great news a couple weeks ago that Allison Monroe, uh, a senior uh, uh, here at Hendricks, I think from Cabot, uh, uh, has won a Watson uh, Fellowship. Uh, this is an incredible honor. Uh, it gives the students a pile of money and says, uh, travel around the world doing a project that means a lot to you, that you have a passion for. The one requirement is you can't come back to the United States. Uh, you really just have to be out there on the road, and that tests them as people, uh, as well as gives them a great opportunity uh, to learn and do research. Uh, like our last Watson recipient, Jessa Thurman, Allison is passionate about bugs. Uh, Jessa was passionate about parasitoid wasps. I am not sure what Allison is passionate about. It's taken me three years just to be able to say parasitoid. Uh, so I'm going to have to see what Allison really cares about. But she'll be traveling to some amazing places, including Thailand and Madagascar, uh, to do her research next year. 
We are also thrilled to have six recipients of JET fellowships. These are Japan education and teaching fellowships awarded by the Japanese government to students from across America and the world to go to Japan uh, and work in schools there, teaching English and teaching global uh, culture. And six for a school the size of Hendrix is pretty phenomenal. When I worked at the University of Kansas, there were some years we were happy to get three or four JET uh, students accepted. Uh, so uh, 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 Hendrix has done really great. And this is one of those wonderful times of year when I walk across campus and look at students, and they know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, what are you doing after you graduate? And they offer up to me and tell me, I'm going to this graduate school. I got into med school yesterday. I'm so thrilled about that job I'm going to have in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, it really is an amazing time of year. Let me just give one further example uh, of our students and recent alums. Uh, and this is pulled from the national news headlines uh, a couple months ago uh, about uh, one of our recent graduates, Travis Kaufman, class of 2009, uh, who works as an environmental consultant in Fort Collins, Colorado. As many or all of you may have seen on the news, he was out for a jog early one morning on a mountain trail and was suddenly attacked by a juvenile mountain lion. Being an environmental consultant and a good, warm-hearted Hendrix alum, he tried to pull it off his arm. He tried to scare it off as he was trained. He tried to run away from it, but without success. So he ended up killing the mountain lion with his bare hands. And even though he had a lot of scars uh, and stitches to show for it, he survived with his life. Now, I will not be able to promise you that all the students at Hendrix today are learning advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. We actually do not offer that class. But I will promise you that they will all be prepared, as all the graduates in this room have been, by the rigorous, engaged liberal arts education that we offer here, and by the strong, supportive community we have at Hendrix for any surprises that life might deal them including mountain lion attacks. I'm also proud that Hendricks is still what I call a social escalator for the state of Arkansas. Even though, as you all know, our sticker price is eye-popping, we have focused over the past five years on accessibility and affordability, uh, on making sure that Hendrix is within reach of all talented young people in Arkansas and across the nation. You all know, I hope, about the Aspire scholarships, uh, which are offered to uh, Pell-eligible students from a network of partners uh, here in central Arkansas, but also in the Delta, including uh, KIPP Delta uh, Public Schools, and also including uh, LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens. We will be uh, graduating our first group of Aspire scholars uh, in just a few weeks' uh, time. Uh, they have made it through our first cohort uh, 100 percent. Uh, will graduate in four years uh, from Hendrix. Uh, and that is really marvelous. We also have uh, the Advantage Plus program, uh, which has uh, certain academic requirements. But if students meet those requirements, uh, Hendrix guarantees we will meet uh, their full demonstrated uh, cost of attendance uh, at the college. Uh, and these programs, uh, I think, really uh, are true to the character uh, of this school, uh, uh, of having uh, taken those people uh, from small towns, uh, from big cities, uh, and given them uh, a meaningful, life-changing education uh, uh, and helping them along the way. Uh, to make it uh, affordable. I am proud to say uh, that um, uh, uh, right now, uh, about 15 percent of our students here at Hendrix are first-generation college students, uh, and about 30 percent of our students are Pell eligible. Uh, that is to say, the students that need uh, the greatest uh, financial assistance to pursue higher education. We do a lot to support these students, especially Dion Jackson, our Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, and one of our big initiatives this year is we launched a new program called First Gen at Hendrix. Uh, and this will, uh, this provides uh, support uh, and programming uh, for first generation college students. Most importantly, uh, I think it provides mentorship. Uh, we went out to our faculty and staff and asked
asked all of the first generation college graduates uh, if they would mentor uh, the first generation students who are uh, matriculating here to Hendricks uh, and across the board. Uh, they enthusiastically agreed to do that. So we have connected them uh, with our current students uh, and we believe this is going to have a big impact on persistence and success uh, of that population. As a further affirmation of the efforts we are making, a few weeks ago we learned we'd received a large grant from the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation to allow us to continue and expand this programming uh, for years to come. Uh, so this is really something that members of the Hendricks family, I think, can be proud of. So those are all things you'll recognize about Hendricks. Great faculty, great students, doing a lot uh, to serve our state and our nation. But Hendricks has also been changing. So football, as you all know, uh, was gone for a while and has been back now uh, for six years. We are very proud uh, to have had uh, a couple graduating classes uh, of football seniors, another one coming up in a few weeks. Amazingly enough, we now have six professional football players among our Hendricks graduates. Uh, six of our alums are playing in Europe, Germany, Poland, Denmark, and Finland. And I want to brag on two of them in particular. Many of you are familiar with the story of Dayton Wynn, uh, who was the star running back uh, of our first team back on the field. He was from Pea Ridge, uh, Arkansas. Wonderful young man. Uh, was our first all-American in football at Hendricks ever. He was two times first team uh, All-American in D3. When he graduated, he decided football wasn't out of his blood. And so he signed with the Copenhagen Towers of the Danish American Football Federation. He was a star during the season, and he led them to victory in the Danish equivalent of the Super Bowl which you're, if you're a trivia nut, you might be able to tell me is the Mermaid Bowl. <laughs> and he's played another season with them since. Seth Peters, who was our star quarterback uh, from up the road uh, in Greenbrier, he too decided he wanted uh, to keep uh, uh, playing football. So he went to Finland. He signed with a team called the Steelers. I cannot pronounce the name of the city the Steelers are located in. Uh, but he, too, saw tremendous success on the field. Uh, uh, in his first season, they won the league, and he led them to victory in the Finnish equivalent of the Super Bowl, which is called the Spaghetti Bowl. <laughs> Go figure. He has since played two more seasons uh, in Finnish football. He's been a star. There are cutouts of him in convenience stores in this town in Finland. Uh, and he's also uh, pursuing a degree uh, in data analytics and statistics at the local university there, uh, which I think is beautifully Hendrix uh, and wonderful. So the lesson from all this is the return of the football program has been wonderful for this campus. And if, in case anyone asks you, Hendricks College rules Scandinavian football. <laughs> Diversity and inclusion, as I mentioned a little bit, has been a high priority uh, for us on campus. We have been very intentional uh, about trying to make Hendricks uh, look more uh, like uh, uh, our state uh, and our nation. And I'll just give you uh, uh, one data point uh, to give you a sense of how we're doing on that. The entering class this last August was the second most diverse freshman class in college history. 26% of our new students last August were students of color. The most diverse class in college history was the class before that with 30% students uh, of color. Uh, and that has made uh, a significant and visible difference uh, on our campus. Uh, we have been uh, working on other programs uh, to throw the doors wide uh, on Hendricks. I am very proud of the STEM Scholars Program, uh, which is run by uh, Hendricks alum Laura McDonald, uh, who's on our biology faculty, and also uh, Matt Moran. It is an NSF-funded program uh, that essentially gives full-ride scholarships uh, to Pell-eligible students from Arkansas and across the nation who are interested in, in studying uh, the sciences. Gives them a lot of summarized 
opportunities, a lot of mentoring, a lot of chances uh, to succeed. Uh, and we are uh, uh, finishing the first year with our STEM scholars and getting ready to recruit our second cohort. You may have noticed from the propaganda out there that we have really been increasing our emphasis on career preparation here at Hendricks. You all know, I think, that one of the raps that has taken hold in the media and in the popular imagination is that somehow the liberal arts don't prepare you well for career in life. I can look around the room and disprove that thesis very easily. Right? Uh, uh, I think there is no better preparation uh, for career or life. Nonetheless, so many high school students and parents today have that stuck in their mind. We already had one of the finest uh, career services programs among liberal arts colleges in America, and we dedicated ourselves uh, five years ago uh, to be the best. Uh, and a key part of that uh, is something we've introduced called career term. Uh, if you haven't uh, learned about career term yet, let me encourage you to go online, go into the Hendricks website, see what we have done. I know there are some people in this room who have participated in career term. It is a special program for all sophomores at Hendricks where we invite them back uh, for two and a half days of intensive workshopping and training uh, between the two semesters. So they come back right before the start of classes in the spring. They spend two and a half days uh, learning about things like, how do I interview? How do I write an effective CV? How do I not embarrass myself on social media? What is networking uh, all about? And we have really depended on our alums for this. Last year, we had, or this, uh, in January, we had nine sessions uh, for the students led by alums on everything from entrepreneurship uh, to diversity uh, in the workplace. Uh, when we put, out, uh, put that out to alums, we asked people to apply uh, to do one of these programs. We thought, are we going to get nine people who want to do this? We had 36 applicants from among Hendricks alums to run one of those sessions for our students. That's phenomenal. Let me encourage you to think about doing that next year. We'll need you. Uh, uh, and the impact has been terrific. Uh, one of the neat things about career term is we simply ask students to wear professional attire for two and a half days. Okay, Put on a jacket, put on a necktie, put on decent shoes. It is amazing how people ratchet up from that. That when you're out of sweats, all of a sudden, you feel elevated uh, and professional. Uh, and I think we're going to see the results of this uh, down the road. It has gotten shout outs in the media extensively. It was featured in the Chronicle of Higher Ed, Inside Higher Education, and in the Washington Post uh, as one of the innovative things uh, that colleges are doing. And I'm particularly impressed that it even got a shout out from the Christensen Institute. You all may have heard of this thing. It is a think tank run by Harvard Business School professor Clay Christensen which promotes innovation and disruptive change in American higher education. Who knew we'd be doing disruptive change at Hendricks? Uh, but I love it. Finally, let me mention the most obvious change, which you all will already have noticed, uh, that there is no more rainy building and no more Hewlin Hall. Thank you for not throwing biscuits at me. Uh, I know I ruined so many alums' lives uh, by bringing Hewlin Hall down. I have heard it all. First meal away from home, first date, first kiss, first smoke, first more things than I want to mention, okay, <laughs> happened in that building. But I hope you'll agree with me that what is rising in its place is exciting. The Dawkins Welcome Center is beautiful. The Miller Creative Quad is going to be stunning. Uh, what an addition that'll be to campus. Uh, I did a hard hat tour the other day and went through some of those dorm rooms. I want to live in those dorm rooms. The view from those windows across this campus is just phenomenal. And especially once those azaleas come out, it is going to be incomparable there. We had such good fortune in being able to hire uh, an amazing new director uh, for the Wingate Museum of Art, which will occupy uh, the first floor of the North Wing uh, of the Creative Quad. Mary Kennedy uh, joined us just a few months ago uh, and has been working nonstop uh, ever since to begin the programming uh, for that. It is going to be exciting. Uh, so. Uh, keep watch uh, because we'll be announcing some of the programming around that museum. What really excites me is it's going to be largely student-driven. 
education, marketing, curatorial work, students are going to be at the center of it all. And that, to me, is perfect with the Hendrix character. Now, I could go on. Believe me, you can tell. You've already pulled my string. You know, I'm talking. There are so many good stories to tell and so much happening on campus, but I just want to end with one thought. As I've found over the past five years, Arkansas really is a wonderful place. Beautiful, friendly, really genuine, authentic place. But it is 49th out of the 50 states in the proportion of the population earning college degrees. And even though it sounds funny, West Virginia is catching up fast. It's a place where race relations, as we all know, can still be tense and where it can be difficult even to start difficult conversations that need to be heard. It is a place where making ends meet is still a struggle for too many hardworking folks, and where in many places you just don't feel the kind of opportunity and dynamism which you do in many parts, especially urban areas across the United States and the world today. But for all its challenges, Arkansas still has plenty of bright young people, young men and young women with lots of smarts and energy and promise who need to be encouraged to ask tough questions and supported in taking risks and pushing themselves and inspired to dream big and thrive at a demanding liberal arts college with a warm, nurturing community that celebrates creativity and individual differences. There's no other college or university in Arkansas like Hendricks, and there are darn few in the South. Arkansas needs Hendricks. The nation needs Hendricks now more than ever before. Thank you to all the alums in this room, especially thank you to our award recipients for making us proud every day. The reputation of this college is grounded in very large part on the continued distinction of our graduates, their professional accomplishments, their personal qualities, their leadership in communities and churches and countless other organizations, their collective clout as the Hendrix Mafia, which is a fearsome and wonderful thing, at least here in central Arkansas. I cannot possibly run through all the great things I hear about Hendricks alumni, but after talking for too long already, I can sit down and let us get around to our real business here this morning, turning the spotlight on some absolutely remarkable people who represent all that is best about this college, its impact, and its importance to Arkansas, the nation, and the world. So congratulations to our res award recipients today, and thank you all again for being here with us for this special occasion. Thank you, Bill. It's my pleasure to invite Martha Bumpers, class of 1973, the chair of the Alumni Board of Governors, to come forward to assist with our awards presentation. Martha. Good morning. On behalf of the Alumni Association Board of Governors, I welcome you here today. We are glad to see each of you. The Alumni Association Board of Governors created the Hendricks Humanitarian Award to recognize and honor living alumni who significantly improve the quality of life in the world through their service and dedication, dedication to humanity. The Hendricks College Alumni Association is pleased to recognize Heather Newell, class of 2011, as the, as the 2019 recipient of the Hendricks Humanitarian Award. Heather, would you please come forward? <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, thank you so much. Can I make my remarks now? No, you just. Oh, okay. I'm going to say what you think. Oh, okay. It is my great pleasure to share the following citation recognizing achievements and dedication that have earned you this honor. 
Whereas, Heather Newell has spent the last seven years gaining experience in international education, social enterprise, women's empowerment, and mental health. And whereas Heather Newell has served in the U.S. Peace Corps in Rwanda, then consulted for a microfinance bank and helped launch the Women's Bakery, which trains women to run and operate nutrition-centric bakeries in East Africa. And whereas Heather Newell now works in the mental health field, facilitating connections to work and educational opportunities for young adults with mental health barriers. And whereas Heather Newell chairs the advisory board for Growing Colorado Kids, a refugee organization that teaches refugee and immigrant youth to harvest and cook healthy food. And whereas Heather Newell has written and published a variety of articles specific to LGBTQ plus topics and issues, and whereas Heather Newell has been a loyal Hendricks graduate and faithful supporter of her alma mater, and whereas Heather Newell embodies what it means to significantly improve the quality of life in the world through her service and dedication to humanity. Therefore, the Hendricks College Association Board of Governors is proud to bestow the 2019 Hendricks Humanitarian Award upon Heather Newell, Hendricks College alumna from the class of 2011 and to hold her up to the Hendricks community and to the world as one who has significantly improved the quality of life in the world through service and dedication to, to humanity. Conway, Arkansas, April 6, 2019. We'd like to hear from you, Heather. Great. Woo! I haven't had that happen in my life before. <laughs> that was lovely. Thank you all for this wonderful opportunity and certainly for this wonderful honor. Truly, I'm very humbled. I'm delighted to be back at Hendrix on this occasion and particularly, particularly to show my lovely fiance, Chelsea, the place and community that shaped molded and built the woman I've become. Now, when I first visited Hendrix on a prospective student visit, I was told on a tour that this was a dry county, and I thought this was related to rain patterns. <laughs> <laughs> so I've come a long way. <laughs> Jokes aside, I knew I wanted to come to Hendrix within the first 20 minutes of that visit. Sure, I was smitten with the trees, but more importantly, I was drawn to the idea that I could grow not only as a student here, but as a person. Additionally, I came to Hendricks to play field hockey, the first NCAA program in the state of Arkansas. I went on to captain the team for four years with our first zero in 15 season, we scored one goal, <laughs> to eventually leading our team to be a competitive program. My experiences at Hendricks influenced my appreciation and love for humanity. Since a young girl, I was always drawn towards service in the act of helping others. Hendricks took this passion and created pathways to enact it. At Hendricks, I was able to conceptualize service in the lens of faith when I participated in a tour of historical, historical locations from the civil rights movement across the Deep South. There was a moment during this trip, astutely named the Journey of Reconciliation, which shaped my life forever. A woman speaking at a church that had once been burned down by the KKK spoke about her belief in radical reconciliation and forgiveness. This she shared was the only way forward. Upon hearing her speak, I knew that fighting for social justice and working towards equity, uh, equity across borders, genders, and boundaries was something I would take seriously as my life trajectory continued. Hendricks opened up important doors for travel and the exploration of my identity on a global scale. During my junior year, I studied abroad in Ghana and my hopes were solidified that I would one day join the Peace Corps. 
I did just that. After Hendricks, I taught in Rwanda for two and a half years, living in a remote region and integrating into the community as best as I could. As a teacher, I completed over 100 home visits, and in doing so, was shown the beautiful, beautiful diversity of the human experience. Mm -hmm. Members of my community taught me grace, gratitude, sincerity, and frankly, the realities of deep systemic poverty. I also witnessed the enormities of gender inequities for women. Girls in my classes dropped out because they didn't have the school fees necessary. When money got tight for families, male mobility was given preference over opportunities for women. I observed that frequently women did not have the agency to make decisions, even in their own lives, and this disparity left a mark on me. A couple of years after completing my Peace Corps service in Rwanda in 2015, I returned to help launch the Women's Bakery. The Women's Bakery is a social enterprise that trains women to run and operate bakeries throughout Rwanda. As a founding member of the organization, I helped conceive and plan for the establishment of this women-run business. I wrote the curriculum for the program while also leading our marketing and fundraising efforts. To date, nearly 50 women are employed, making at least double their pre-bakery incomes. More recently, I've left the Women's Bakery to pursue a career in mental health. I'm currently a graduate student at the University of Colorado Denver, studying counseling with hopes to become a therapist that specializes in couples and families, especially within the LGBTQ community. Currently, to gain experience and exposure to the field, I work at a community mental health agency in Colorado. My team works with adolescents experiencing their first episode of psychosis, and my role is to help them find competitive employment and education opportunities. While this work is challenging at times, it reminds me that everyone, no matter what your walk in life, deserves the right to seek knowledge, opportunity, and growth. I do this work because the spirit of vocation and calling runs deep within me. I am meant to be a presence for others. Hendricks College showed me that. I am meant to use my voice to advocate for others. And again, Hendricks College showed me that. When we leverage our own power for the good of others, our world becomes a place where all may speak, all may pray, all may grow, and all may be seen. That is my dream, and I plan to continue to work towards that every day of my life. Thank you to Hendrix, all of my mentors, my teachers, my friends, my coaches, um, for setting me on this course just a decade ago. I am forever grateful. Thank you. Congratulations, Heather, and thank you very much. In 2007, the Alumni Association Board of Governors created an award to recognize the accomplishments and promise of the college's young alumni. The Outstanding Young Alumnus or Alumni Award is presented to an alumnus or alumna of Hendricks College who has shown accomplishment and promise in his or her chosen profession or in service to the broader community and has demonstrated continuing loyalty, support, and advocacy for the college. The recipient should be within 15 years of his or her graduation. Today, we recognize Douglas Hutchings, a member of the class of 2005 as the recipient, as the 20, 000, 2019 recipient of the award. Mr. Hutchings, would you come forward, please? <laughs> Douglas, it is my great pleasure to share the following citation recognizing achievements and dedication that have earned you this honor. Whereas Douglas Hutchings has worked in the solar industry to develop cutting edge technology, optimize the supply chain for local installers, and serve as an advocate for intelligent policy at the local, state, and national level, and whereas Douglas Hutchings co-founded Pika Solar, a solar equipment company built around technology he developed while conducting research for his master's and doctoral degrees at the University of Arkansas. And whereas Douglas Hutchings has served on the Arkansas Science and Technology Authority STEM Advisory Board and was a founding board member of the Arkansas Advanced Energy Association 
and its corresponding foundation. And whereas Douglas Hutchings supports entrepreneurship in Arkansas through his work with the Office of Entre Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the University of Arkansas and Innovate Arkansas, playing a role in ensuring that Arkansas graduates can join a company or create their own job regardless of their academic discipline. And whereas Douglas Hutchings has been a loyal Hendricks graduate and faithful supporter of his alma mater. Therefore, the Hendricks College Alumni Association Board of Governors is proud to bestow the 2019 Outstanding Young Alumnus Award upon Douglas Hutchings, Hendricks College alumnus from the class of 2005, and to hold him up to the Hendricks community and to the world as an exemplar of the values of Hendricks College. Conway, Arkansas, April 6, 2019. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Um, in the entrepreneurship community, we often talk about our unfair competitive advantage, right? What sets you apart from other people who are trying to duplicate your success? And I've told many people, I consider Hendrix and the education I got here my own personal unfair competitive advantage. Not only could I focus on math and science, which is where my passion was, but was able to complement that uh, with uh, classes in philosophy, literature, and um, other things that have made a huge difference. Um, it set me up not only to overcome challenges that were to come, but more importantly, to capitalize on opportunities as they came up. Um, in addition to the educational component of Hendrix, I have many fond memories of the campus. I met my wife here. Um, I promise it was in the library and not one of the more social events. <laughs> um, I have uh, many friends uh, who I consider extended family uh, who attended uh, Hendricks with me here. To, uh, and, um, and your comments, Bill, about uh, access of Hendricks, uh, especially to folks coming out of small towns. Growing up working on poultry houses in Mena, Arkansas, small town, the, Hendri the tuition for Hendricks when I came here was on par with my family's annual income. Um, and uh, Hendricks College worked I don't know how they did it, but they worked with me every step of the way to make it all possible, and for that, I'm truly thankful. So, thank you very much. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For 59 years, the Alumni Association has presented the Distinguished Alumnus or Alumna Award to a living alum who has distinguished him or herself in vocation, service to humanity, and service to the college. Today, we recognize Carol Hampton Rasco, a member of the class of 1969 as the 2019 Distinguished Alumna. Ms. Rasko, Carol, would you please come forward? Welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wonderful. Congratulations. Right over here. Carol, it is my great pleasure to share the following citation, recognizing achievements and dedication that have earned you this honor. Whereas Carol Hampton Rasco has been a lifelong policy advocate for children, improving education, promoting early literacy, and supporting children with disabilities. I'm a former teacher, so <laughs> this is a little bit emotional. Whereas Carol Hampton Rasco served as director of the Domestic Policy Council for President Clinton, spending four years in the White House influencing national policy regarding Im immunizations disability rights, immigration, and health care. And whereas Carol Hampton Rasco's career led to a role 
as a senior advisor to United States Secretary of Education Richard Riley, directing the America Reads Challenge, a four-year national campaign that promoted the importance of children reading well and independently by the end of the third grade. And whereas Carol Hampton Rasco served Reading is Fundamental as its president and CEO, growing the organization's national presence by increasing community and private partnerships, enabling it to provide 4.4 million children with free books and literacy resources each year, including the addition of tips and resources for parents. And whereas Carol Hampton Rasco has been a loyal Hendricks alumna and faithful supporter of her alma mater, therefore, the Hendricks College Alumni Association Board of Governors is proud to bestow the 2019 Distinguished Alumna Award upon Carol Hampton Rasco, Hendricks College alumni from the class of 1969, and to hold her up to the Hendricks community and to the world as an exemplar of the values of Hendricks College. Conway, Arkansas, April 6, 2019. Let's move over this way. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Carol. Well, thank you. President Sisuli, thank you very much, and to Martha Bumpers, and to the members of the Hendricks College Alumni Association Board, with particular gratitude to my friend Stacy Sells for her belief in me and nominating me. Any award of this nature, really, is a reflection of two primary things, I think the values instilled in an individual by the close circle of family, friends, and organizations in the earliest years of the life of the person, and then the wider circle of extended family, friends, coworkers, mentors, professionals, supporters in so many ways each year as life progresses. Today, I know the real word meaning to be humble because I am humbled to have so many of you from those circles in my life here today as we celebrate what together we have accomplished through various endeavors and so because I do believe it's because we together have done this whether you have been in my scout troop You've seen that my family got what they needed when I was on the road, or you've worked to teach me about people and places and things that I didn't know enough about to be making policy. So I'm gonna ask that everybody gets to take a quick stand-up break here that has worked with me in any way, and I will know if we have worked or supported one another and you don't stand. So let's go, birthday bunch. Come on, I want you all to stand that have done that. Come on, you've supported me, my word, you have. Family, yes, family, get up. Where, back there, family, get up. My friend, get up. It's your award too. Of course, there are a few in those earliest years who aren't here with us today. My late parents, Barnes and Ruby Hampton, and my grandparents, Mid and Hampy, along with Mary Dallas, whom many of you did not know, but my grandmother who was with me for the first three years of my life. These were the primary people who raised me in DeWitt, Arkansas. And talking about a small town. <laughs> And they provided to each of us three Hampton girls lots of love, lessons in faith, discipline, caring concern for others, a love of reading and learning, and an education, formal and informal, as long as we wanted to go to school or explore the world. 
how lucky we were. We're missing today as well, my late baby sister, Becky. Now, many of you have asked me today, where is your daughter, Mary Margaret? Where is your son-in-law? Well, they're off on a trip with their oldest grandchild, uh, who's hit his first double-digit birthday this week, and the trip had been long planned. And so I was determined I would not be the grandmother who said to that young man turning 10, I'm so sorry you have to delay your trip, and who knows if you'll get Harry Potter tickets on Broadway again for, for a year or two. I understand the two nights were magnificent. I'm proud to have the second Mark son, my grandson Charles Hampton Marks, or Charlie, and my son, Hamp Rasco, escorting me today, along with a great contingency of family and friends. There is indeed a third grandson, Howard, and he is three. I made a decision again in the place of grandmother that I would not cause Howard, with his engaging personality and exuberance for life and high energy, I would not put him in the position of his grandmother having him present and getting the first question marks put into a college admissions file for future <laughs> students. Because I know how those travel through circles beyond a single college. I assure you, Howard's having a great time at home playing with friends and singing. Little did I know when I first stepped on this campus for my second cousin's the late Larry R. Barnes graduation in 1959 when I was finishing the fifth grade, that I, in meeting two of his colleagues attending this college, would find them to be invaluable to my family and my work years later. Frazier Kennedy went on to become a pediatrician who provided support and more support as Hamp struggled at birth and for months and years to follow. And he introduced me to the person I consider a great lifesaver, Thea Spatz from here. Where are you, my friend? Is she still here? There you are. I will, I will digress a moment and tell you how in this wonderful small state and, and this community of Hendricks, Frazier was so determined to help me find the services that I knew from studying this field we ought to be providing this brand new child. And one day this little card dropped through the mail slot on the door and he told me later he wasn't gonna bother me. And it was an invitation to the open house for the first infant intervention parent participation program in the state of Arkansas. And he circled the name Thea Spatz and he wrote me a note. Knew her at Hendrix. She is a great person, and she will help you with the question we haven't solved yet. And boy, did life become more exciting and full of promise as we met Thea and her colleagues. Thank you so much. And then he introduced me to Kelsey Kaplinger, who drove up in the shiniest red convertible I'd ever seen in my life. And Kelsey became, a great, uh, became an allergy doctor and a great friend of our family. And he started the Aldersgate Med Camps. And I want to tell you that's one of the most significant contributions the United Methodist Church has made to the disability field. Amen. <laughs> In addition to the graduates of this school contributing to my ability to work in policy and education, there are two professors from my time here who embody for me what a liberal arts education provided me. The late Hal Allen was my French one instructor here. And at the end of three weeks, I went in to see him and I said, Dr. Allen, I love your class, but I have made a horrible mistake. I said, I have realized I am sitting in that class with students from high schools that are bigger than my hometown who took four years of French before they came here and they're in French one. 
and I, I didn't take French in high school. I had two years of Spanish, but the man who taught the class told us the first day he was mad he was having to teach it. <laughs> and that when basketball season arrived, that was his priority as the coach, and we would kind of be left on our own. I could rattle off memorized dialogues after those two years, 90 to nothing, but I had not a clue what I was really saying. At that point, Dr. Allen interrupted me and shared with me what I heard him say many, many times in his classes and that I read probably nine years ago an article in the alum magazine or Hendricks publication, another student who said the same thing that they learned from Dr. Allen, almost the same words as I remembered it. And he said, learning a language, a foreign language, is so much like life, Carol. You have to open yourself to possibilities, open yourself to experiencing new things, be open to change. And if you're willing to approach it that way and not worry about whether you make an A, then you will get a lot out of it. He taught us to dump our heads, in his phrase, and visualize words in French as a part of our lives. Well, I now move to the second professor. I probably quote Dr. Rosemary Hindenburg in 90% of the speeches I've given over the years. There are people all over the world who know her name, who know it's Hendricks College, and that it was in drama classes that I learned some of the most valuable lessons about policy making. Rosemary taught me how to dump my head and then how to fill it when it comes to understanding people, their needs, their deficits, their strengths, their experiences, and often their environment that is totally different from mine. And that is a critical skill for people who are going to make policy that affects those people unlike me. For a policy person to then tell those folks that I learned this from a, because I declared myself a drama major when asked to do so at registration the first day, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, and my student advisor, Wendy, I wish I remembered her last name, she was a senior, she said, you'll love drama. Tell them you want to major in drama. So I did. <laughs> Used to call my daddy every time I made good use of some of that drama work, and uh, he said, Carol, you don't need to call me anymore. You have really gotten a return on that investment. <laughs> so for all of that, I say thank you, Hendricks College. In short, when asked why I've chosen to do what I've done in my life, I go back to the simplicity and yet often profound lessons given to me from children's literature. And whether you agree with Theodore Gazelle or Dr. Seuss's politics or not, he usually says it pretty well. Unless someone like you and you and you, Carol, cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It is not. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Carol. That was a lovely. I love mentioning Rosemary. That was perfect. <laughs> Congratulations to each of our recipients, and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Next year, we will recognize Teresa Clogston Awesome, a member of the class of 1972, as the 2019, this year, James E. Major Service Award recipient. Teresa was not able to be here today, so we look forward to recognizing her next year. Again, congratulations to Heather, Douglas, and Carol on behalf of the Alumni Association of Hendricks College. And thanks to all of you for being here.
Thank you, Martha, and congratulations again to each of our recipients. Your stories truly inspire us, and we often think that we measure our success uh, as an institution by the lives that our alumni lead. And so for that, we're very grateful and most proud, so thank you. You know, this wonderful event today, all the events of the weekend, we have many more uh, in store for you. I hope you'll participate in those. But I want to give a special thanks to Krista Davis, Jenny Kyle, and Pamela Owen and the alumni office who worked so hard for not only this event, but all the things we do. Uh, and one other person I want to recognize today, uh, the first alumni weekend that she has not participated since uh, 1986. Barbara Horton is retiring this year from the college. Uh, she joined the staff in the summer of 1986. And uh, as many of you know, she has been a faithful uh, member of the alumni office and the development office for so long. Uh, most of you have probably received handwritten notes from her or phone calls from her or flowers from her on, in the case of uh, something going on in your life or your family. Uh, but she, I think, uh, would be awfully proud to hear the remarks today, especially yours, Carol, uh, the way in which the many lives you've touched. I think Carol, uh, Barbara has embodied that on this campus for over three decades, and so we'll miss her. There's a reception for her at 1130 over in the Mills Library, which is fitting if you'd like to, uh, to make that as well. Um, but speaking of distinguished alums, though, I would uh, encourage you to look on the table. There's a sheet there that has names of past recipients. We need your help. Uh, think about classmates, friends, colleagues that you know who uh, embody the kinds of characteristics and qualities that you've heard demonstrated here today. We need your nominations. So take that with you. Take a look at the past recipients, and hopefully you'll be inspired to nominate someone uh, for a future consideration by the Alumni Board of Governors. It is a full weekend on campus. Uh, the reception for Barbara Horton is at 11.30. We begin our last lectures also in the Mills Center at 12.30. As, as Bill mentioned earlier, some of our retiring faculty, we have four who are speaking this afternoon. We have a Miller Center uh, event for some of you who may have participated in the Miller Center over the years. The 10th anniversary of that will be in this building at 5 o'clock. There are alumni parties going on all over Little Rock and Conway uh, this afternoon and this evening. And tomorrow we'll have our final event, which will be the Alumni Weekend Memorial Service, in which we recognize all those individuals in the alumni family who have passed away over the last year will be recognized at the memorial service at Green Chapel at 1030 uh, tomorrow morning. So hope that you'll be able to participate in some of those. Thank you so much for being here today as we celebrate and recognize uh, today's tremendous recipients. Thank you.